They started out small. And they were both literally making games in a basement in Chicago. Gained a dedicated following. Make PC. And it was political. It was Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs. It was all of that stuff. It was good versus evil for some Mac fans. Created a lineup of legendary games. I think it really hit the limelight with Marathon. People love that they love the way it looked. Yeah. I don't think Xbox would be as big as it is without Halo. It took on a giant. They built on the biggest cannon in the world and they're pointing it at Sony. Icons presents the history of Bungie. In 1972, Pong brings gaming to the masses. 20 years later, the classic game is revitalized by a college student, Alex Seropian. It was a Macintosh version of Pong, originally titled Gnop, which was just Pong backwards. It was those kind of sophisticated days of software development. While Gnop doesn't shake the foundations of gaming, it marks the first appearance of a company called Bungie. I decided that I really wanted to have my own business. I had done a lot of programming, I was really into games, so I thought, well, gee, this sounds like a great idea. I'll try and make a game and sell it. President Bush says the Soviet proposal to end the war is unacceptable. The next thing was a much more ambitious project called Operation Desert Storm. It was a pretty cool strategy game. I actually finished it, raised some money from my parents and their friends, like 10 grand, made a box, duplicated all the discs myself, started selling it. Operation Desert Storm sells only about 2,500 copies. But Alex soon meets a classmate named Jason Jones, who shares his passion for gaming. After I had done Desert Storm, we were in an AI class together. Jason and Alex were both working on separate projects. Jason has a lot of the creative and uh, technical experience and talents, and Alex was pretty savvy with the business and marketing side. Jason was working on Minotaur. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, dude, that is cool. But he, he didn't really want to finish it. And I don't know that he really thought about selling it, but you know, I kind of just kept talking about it. And eventually, I, I convinced him that we could actually sell it. So we did that together. They were literally making games in a basement in Chicago, programming and designing and doing everything themselves, the sound, the scripts, the, even the packaging. After Minotaur, we did a game called Pathways in the Darkness which was an adventure game. It was a single-player game. It was the first 3D texture map game on, on Mac. And that was the first project that sort of met with commercial success. It was in my basement apartment. I was riding my exercise bike, sweating up a storm, stressed out, of course, and fax machine rings. And I look over and I see this fax coming. It's like a $40,000 order. It was like way bigger than any order we'd ever gotten before. And I'm looking at it come through the fax machine and I like jump off the bike, I'm dancing around the room. That made us enough money that we could start paying a few people. That's when we got in a real office. Bungie sets up shop in Chicago in 1993. And their office space isn't the only thing they expand. For their next game, they plan to reach an even bigger audience. Jason and I were talking about why aren't we picking the low-hanging fruit, you know? We shouldn't give anybody a reason not to buy our game. Like, there's no reason to make something less accessible. Marathon was really a great answer to that. Marathon really established a world with mood and atmosphere. It really gave you a sense that you were participating in this adventure. It really used the first-person perspective to tell a story and to engage you in a world. I don't think we really knew how important that play was going to be until we set that up and took it to Macworld and let people just walk up and play it. And there were just lines on the machines. People just wanted to play it because it was so fun. The company really hit the limelight with Marathon. This was around the Doom period, and this was the Mac alternative to PC's Doom. And in a way, it was a more sophisticated game. Marathon was successful on a lot of levels. It did sell a lot of units. We did three versions of Marathon on the Mac. And 
a version of Marathon on PC. The Marathon Games propel Bungie to superstar status in the Mac world. Now the Chicago-based company will set their sights on a new market. But this change in direction will also lead to division among their most dedicated fans. By 1994, Bungie has established itself as a premier game developer for the Macintosh. But if the company wants to continue to grow, they'll have to expand their reach. One of the first steps is supporting Marathon 2 to the PC in September 1996. But Bungie's wider focus comes with some consequences. The closest thing to a console rivalry that you can see in the PC space would have been Mac PC. And it was political. It was Bill Gates versus Steve Jobs. It was all of that stuff. It was good versus evil for some Mac fans. Mac fans were a very protective bunch, and, uh, and here they were with uh, a game, you know, with Marathon and Durandal that were theirs. Perhaps the first betrayal of Mac fans was making Marathon for the PC, and they were fuming. I think the feeling is that if Bungie starts moving into the PC side, that they might actually start selling a bunch of copies and then realizing that that's where the money is potentially and never come back. We were a growing business, and there was demand for the game, and we didn't hate PC owners, and we didn't hate the PC market. We were a business, so we made a PC game. Bungie shifts even further into the PC camp with their newest game, Myth. Myth was Bungie's first simultaneous uh, Mac and PC release. Yesterday, our Legion entered the village of Crowsbridge and halted there for the night. Well, the game was beautiful. It still is, but at the time, it was just gorgeous. The water and the hills and the big, bloody bits that would go flying with every explosion. It was really compelling from a visual standpoint. Myth was a, a chance to do something different. Bungie decided to move on to real-time strategy instead of just doing another first-person shooter because Jason was tired of working on first-person shooters. There were strategy games that were coming out that were pretty popular, like Warcraft and Command and & Conquer. But we kind of looked at what they were doing and turned around and looked the other direction. There was a lot that we did with Myth that made it different. Made it 3D. It almost had a sense of humor to it. The bridge is being attacked. Let's get out of here. Woo! Yay! Myth did great on the PC, and I think it, it stopped us being this Mac developer. Myth just kind of swept away the divisions between the systems and people's minds. The success of Myth gives Bungie the chance to expand once again. They change offices in Chicago and open a new branch in San Jose to work on other projects. This facility is involved in the manufacture of illegal technology. Then the Chicago office faces one of Bungie's first great challenges. Bungie has certainly had its share of trials and tribulations. Welcome to Myth 2, Soul Blight. Do what you're told, and you might live to tell about it. Working on Myth 2 was one of the big trials. Click on the target dummies to blow them up. We ended up having to recall Myth 2 because of a bug. No, 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 no. Blow up the target dummies. Essentially, when you would uninstall the game, it would wipe the directory that you had installed it to. If you installed the game to the root level of your hard drive and then uninstalled it, it would proceed to actually wipe your entire hard drive. Casualty. It was a bad bug. Fortunately, we caught it just days before the game was supposed to be on store shelves. Please don't harm the peasants. Just that one action of not wanting our customers to have their hard drive erased cost Bungie about a million dollars. <laughs> That'll teach them. And being a small independent publisher, that was a lot of money. We end up selling a small stake in the company to take two, actually, just in order to get in development capital. And from that point on, there was always sort of this knowledge that we weren't invincible, that, you know, we, we could make mistakes. The near disaster teaches Bungie a valuable lesson, <gasps> which will affect a key decision in their future. The Chicago branch of Bungie releases Myth 2 in 1998. Their San Jose branch takes Bungie in another direction with Oni. Oni was our first project out of Bungie Studios West, and it was a console game. It was a fast-paced action shoot-em-up with some platforming elements and some adventure elements. 
I want some answers, and I want them now. Uh, there are a lot of really sophisticated and compelling experiences on Oni when you look at the, the second second combat that you were fighting. <laughs> Only was received fairly well critically, but a lot of gamers were disappointed because they felt that they were expecting a very different game. As the Bungie offices work on Myth 2 and Oni, a third project is quietly being developed by a small group of programmers. Blam was the code name for the project or the team at the time, sometimes called them monkey nuts. But gamers will know the game as Halo. The initial idea was to do a strategy type game like Myth, fully 3D in a different genre, like sci-fi or military, you know. And, and the first demo for that was the Rolling Hills, but with like a whole ton of dudes running around all in 3D. They upgraded the terrain engine, got a little foot soldier who was actually a 3D model instead of a sprite, had him running around, and they realized they were having so much fun running this little guy around that maybe what they really wanted to do was an action game where you were that guy instead of a strategy game. When you're in third person, you're manipulating an avatar. When you're in first person, you're performing the action yourself. We want to tell this epic story, make the player feel like they are immersed in the environment. When Halo was actually announced, I think it was at Tokyo Mac World, it was announced as part of uh, Drive for the Mac as a gaming platform. That's when we started getting a, a lot of attention. One of the companies paying attention is Microsoft. Alex Seropian came to Bungie West and sat down with everybody and said, listen, there's this thing called the Xbox that we think is going to be really interesting. Microsoft is essentially gearing up to take on Sony with PlayStation 2. They want to go after them. I think the phrase he said is, they're building the biggest cannon in the world and they're pointing it at Sony. Jason and I have been talking and we think that we can help them build a great machine. Once we got back from E3, Jason and Alex held a few meetings where they told us Microsoft's looking to acquire us, but we're not going to do anything unless we're all willing to do it. They had to make sure that the entire team was willing to leap off the cliff with them into this totally new territory. As it turned out, pretty much the entire development team decided to make the jump and move out to Seattle. Microsoft purchases Bungie in 2000 for an undisclosed sum. While the team settles into their new home, they face heavy backlash from some of their fans. Particularly the Macintosh community. People who work with Macintoshes tend to be, you know, at the time, you know, very fiercely proud. They really perceive it as a betrayal in every way. It's just business, and we wanted to make the best game on the best platform. Undeterred by the criticism they face, Bungie focuses on turning Halo into a game for Xbox. Up to that point, of course, it was a PC game, and, you know, a Mac game even before that, but as soon as we knew we were going to be on the Xbox, we kind of rewrote everything from scratch. Some of the real important things were spending a lot of time figuring out what the interface was going to be like, because no longer are you sitting five inches from the screen with a keyboard and a mouse, which is a direct pointing device. Now you're sitting 10 feet from the screen with this console controller. That is one of the things that I think really makes Halo work, is the interface, the controls. Well, I think there was a lot of skepticism uh, around Halo and the Xbox console, but I think that in many ways the skepticism was well-placed. It's a first-person shooter. It's a team that has never produced a console game before in any real way. Halo is shown in playable form on the Xbox at E3 in 2001. But the game is rough, and the public reaction is mixed. A lot of working pieces about Xbox showing at E3 could have been a lot better. There's nothing we can do. Some of it was that the hardware wasn't ready. There are different expectations set upon a console game than PC games. Uh, the E3 version of the game is slow and buggy. This thing is falling apart. It'll hold. We're not going to make it. We'll make it. And gamers wonder if Halo is just hype. But Bungie proves them wrong. Halo is released on November 15, 2001, and it takes the gaming world by storm. So when Halo arrived, we didn't even know if the console was going to be successful. We didn't even know if the ground we were standing on was going to be there the next day. But the console took off, the game took off. I don't think Xbox will be as big as it is when Halo. Xbox has been successful, I mean, 14 million units and, and many millions of different types of games. Halo is pretty much at the center. Well, I wanted to make sure we had great music that came in when music was needed. And when music wasn't needed, that there was a totally convincing, realistic, or even surrealistic ambient and sound design supporting the whole thing. The single player game was really incredible. I knew that people were gonna fall in love with it. 
the epic nature of the whole thing. It's a beautiful game and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> people would get together and they would play the game with their friends and they'd develop and build rivalries with real people. Halo becomes a nationwide phenomenon. Oh! It sells 10 million units in only eight months and is adopted by the World Cyber Games. Professional gamers play it for cash prizes and it becomes the must-have Xbox game. But just as Bungie is riding high on their success, they go through yet another big change. The 2001 release of Halo on the Xbox is a resounding success. But while Bungie celebrates, Alex Seropian decides to leave the company he helped create. Well, I, I did want to go back home to Chicago. And Bungie had done great stuff. Halo had been really successful, and the team was really nicely set up at Microsoft. I had a lot of respect from the people you know, around us at Microsoft. The team was able to, uh, and is able to you know, do anything. They were in a really good place. I felt as though I could go back home, and, and they would do really well. And I, I think they're doing great. Seropian will go on to form Wide Load Games. Meanwhile, Bungie starts work on Halo 2. Halo 1 was a, essentially a nine-month crunch, and so everybody was exhausted and kind of scattered all across the world, and then came back a month or two later to talk about what we were going to do next. Hiya. Welcome to Bungie Studios. And this is the, uh, the secret hallway that leads to the Bungie paradise. When you've got a game that's so big as Halo, the sequel is going to be, you know, so hotly anticipated. The core value in Halo 2 when comparing it to Halo is that you should pick it up and you should know what to do and it should feel like Halo. Every time you added something, we have to play around with it until that feels like an actual part of Halo, until jumping on a ghost and knocking the pilot out feels like Halo and it feels logical and natural and we hope we've done that. A lot of what we tried to make uh, different about Halo 2, a lot of it, the focus really was not on making the gameplay different. The gameplay in Halo 1 was a lot of fun. We wanted to expand on that gameplay. Halo 2's appearance at E3 2003 is the exact opposite of the first game's unpolished debut. The public is awed by the sequel. Well, I just saw the preview for Halo 2, which is awesome. Incredible. I can't wait to try it out my home, get my friends over. I got a bounty on his head, man. Take you down, I'm person! Listening. And it becomes one of the most anticipated games of all time. In 2004, Microsoft reveals the release date for Halo 2. I got your release date right here. November the 9th. And promises that the sequel will support Xbox Live. I know that's going to be keeping us awake nights till November 9th. The coming release of Halo 2 is teased with a very unique marketing ploy. I love bees started as a website with a corrupt front page and it just went in through the ilovebees.com homepage and nested there. We did it obviously as a marketing film. It created a stir and people got interested. Halo 2 November 9th, baby. You remember the day it's gonna be a national holiday. Woo! 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 Bungie makes good on their promise. We're just moments away from midnight. The game is released on November 9th, 2004. Party! It's a nationwide event. What are you doing here? I want to play it at midnight tonight. Because Halo 2 is the best. Halo 2 is everything. Um, I've been waiting for this game for three years. Oh, we don't know. I'm like so pumped. Yo, we got nothing else better to do. And I'm done with school. I have no life. It's all about Halo. <laughs> 2.4 million copies are sold in its first day, bringing in $125 million. No other game does this. Halo 2 grosses more than Hollywood's biggest movies. No doubt about it. And just like when they finished the original Halo, Bungie moves headlong into their next project. But they'll stop just long enough to look back on what they've accomplished. After being done, and I look back on the development of Halo 2, and for me, the, the, the most special moments happened um, not just in the completion of the game, but in getting to work with a, a team of amazingly talented people who care a lot about what they do, uh, and that the, a great game is just icing on the cake.
it's really crazy actually uh, working here at Bungie and being part of Halo. I still, every once in a while, will be standing on a street corner in Seattle and I'll sit there and I think to myself, you know, if I look out here, I could probably see you know, from here 50 or 100 people who have played the video game that I made. Uh, that's crazy. Oh, I think this is over. Oh, no! Electronic show tomorrow night at 10.